host annual meetings regarding sexual harassment prevention. Consider bringing in guest speakers to really make the point and to help you guide your company's culture. Do follow company policies and procedures about sexual harassment and apply them consistently and uniformly. Remove reporting barriers by appointing a female personnel officer as the point person or as the representative to hear all initial sexual harassment complaints. Many more people will avoid filing a complaint when this person happens to be a male in most cases. Do not trivialize any employee complaints and do not attempt to work out harassment complaints on your own. If you're a manager, make sure somebody else above you or somebody in HR knows and is helping you with this. Do not just transfer your complaining employee or the harassing employee. Many supervisors make the mistake of transferring an employee away from a harassing manager or a harassing coworker or moving the problem employee to another location. Okay? This doesn't address the root of the problem, which happens to be the harassing behavior in this person. And it leaves both, both the supervisor and the company open to liability in a retaliation lawsuit and others subject to the harasser for more harassment. Do not engage the complainant in lengthy discussions okay, regarding the complaint or what they're reporting as this may be perceived or misinterpreted by other employees as you being very biased. Now, an interviewer or an investigator must maintain neutrality. So you want to give the accuser and the accused about equal time in reporting their case. And you want to make sure that you keep all of your interviews very formal. Do not sit on a complaint hoping that it will simply blow over because that is usually not the case. A sexual harassment policy. Okay, this is vital. Every company needs a written sexual harassment policy within their handbook that is accessible to all employees in a physical or online format. So with this policy, there should be a statement that sexual harassment is against the law and against company policy. It should also outline that there will be disciplinary action if it arises. There should be examples given about what is and what is not sexual harassment and what's acceptable, what's not. The policy should also outline the complaint or grievance procedure and identify which company officials will receive and investigate the complaints. And again, you're going to give this to the people and review it when you are doing the investigation to make sure everybody's following whatever the policy is. Now, retaliation. It is against the law to retaliate against someone who alleges sexual harassment. I can't stress this enough. This protection applies to those applying for employment, current employees, and former employees, and also includes those participating in an investigation, okay, the, or the proceedings, or a hearing, or litigation related to the sexual harassment case. If anyone other than the accused is assisting with the case in any way, voluntary or involuntarily, they should be free of any adverse impact by the company. Companies must be aware of these laws and ensure all people are protected when an investigation or a case ensues and has ended. So this is retaliation again. It's not just by the company, but it's about those employed or agents related to the company. 